And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Arcbo Knights. That's right, we got a Selesnia deck here. Y'all know that I love my Selesnia decks. This was a, a viewer submitted list. Uh, same person that made from Borderland Ranger, same person that made the Selesnia Knights deck that we played last format has updated it here with Theros. And I'm going to try out try this, uh, this update here. We're going to play it through a league and kind of see how it does. Um, so yeah, we got we got a lot of knights, of course. You know, Worthy Knight, Acclaimed Contender, Knight of Autumn, Conclave Tribunal, Cavalier of Dawn. And to supplement the knights, we have a lot of legendary artifacts, um, including Vivian's Arcbow. And the reason why is because Acclaimed Contender, the things that it reveals, it doesn't just, uh, you know, you look at the top five cards of your library, you don't have to just only grab a knight. You grab a knight, an aura, an equipment, or a legendary artifact. So that means a Shadow Spear, which I guess is an equipment, so we'd still be able to grab either way. Vivian's Arcbow, the Great Henge, Circle of Loyalty. Those are all legendary artifacts. Those are all um, hits for acclaimed contender. You know, of course, Arcbow can kind of dig you through your deck, find more worthy knights or acclaimed contenders, or uh, even Cavalier of Dawn. Cavalier of Dawn um, is pretty cool in this deck because you know how like whenever Cavalier of Dawn dies, you get to return an artifact or an enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. We have a lot of artifacts that we just talked about. Uh, and we have some enchantments here that we'll talk about in just a second. And we can get those into our graveyard also by whenever we activate Vivian's Arcbow, you have to discard a card. So we could discard an enchantment or an, or an artifact, get one into the graveyard. Cavalier of Dawn dies, put it back into our hand. Nice little synergy there. And of course, Cavalier of Dawn just has amazing synergy with Elspeth Conquered's Death because the third chapter of Elspeth Conquered Death returns a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you return the Cavalier of Dawn back to the battlefield whenever, and then whenever the Cavalier of Dawn dies, you put the enchantment card back into your hands. You put the Elspeth Conquered's Death back into your hand. And then whenever the third chapter happens, then you put the Cavalier of Dawn back onto the battlefield and so on. So that's a, that's a cool um loop that those two can kind of do um besides that you know we get we get to play main deck shadow spear for like these dream trawlers also just giving our creatures plus one plus one trample lifelink is nice especially putting that on like a, a conclave cavalier that already has vigilance giving it plus one plus one trample and lifelink or even a cavalier of dawn another vigilant creature we have two pretty big vigilant creatures that are really good to give plus one plus one trample and lifelink to um, so yeah, we have some we have some awesome synergies in here. Uh, we're playing 24 land, which so I'm a tad worried about that. But we have a flower, which is just the 25th land. So we basically have 25 lands in here. Um, hopefully, you know, hit those land drops. We got the Paradise Druids to help cast spells as well. So this should be you know pretty basic mana base. You know, we get the temples now with green white, a couple of castles. Should be a fun one to play. So let's give this a try. So we're going to play this through a league, play till we win five or lose two, whatever happens first. Uh, yes, so, um, yeah, new new change that kind of started yesterday. Um, so you, you can type exclamation point score if you want to see the records for the previous decks here in chat. But then for for people watching on YouTube, I'm not, um, not having spoilers on there. But for those of y'all that want the spoilers of the videos... Um, one, you know, obviously you can just click on a video and you can click to the very end if you want to see the record. But to the last deck of the day, my last upload of the day, I will put all of the record in the video description. I'll put all of the records from the from the whole day in the video description. Um, so you, you can click on that for the people that wanted the spoilers. All right, let's get a, a our green white cat. So Conclave Cavalier, yeah, I'm just gonna play Conclave Cavalier. We don't get the extra one one with the Worthy Knight, but I'm just gonna play the best card that we have. Paradise Druid's probably gonna get stomped. Oh no, I guess that was a possibility card they could have played as well. This is not a very good hand against Iron Crag Pyromancer. 
I can play Worthy Knight plus Knight of Autumn, but, you know, make the Knight of Autumn a 4-3, but then if they have the enchantment that makes 1-1s, one I don't get to destroy that. I think I'm going to do that, though. My other option besides doing that would have been simply to play Temple of Plenty and Scry. Look for some interaction. Iron Crack Pyromancer is pretty rough when you're just trying to play creatures. It's a very powerful card. Good solid draw. Scry that to the bottom. I did attack with the Cavalier. I did. I played those cards second main phase. I had, I had already attacked with the Cavalier. So the first attack of the Cavalier put them down to 16. And then now this turn we attacked for 8. So now they're down to 8. Circle of Loyalty. So they have like Fairy Vandal, Block Paradise Druid. They have to chump with something if they do that. Yeah, feedback so far. Um, a couple of people said they really liked the change, and then then it had a a couple of people said they didn't really like the change. They liked seeing the scores to like know like what like they were saying they liked to see the score and then watch the decks that did well. Um, so kind of mixed. It feels it does feel like the the people that like the change really really appreciate it. Awesome. Conclave Cavalier. It's an underrated card. Underrated card right there. I'm surprised I don't have a card style for that. Does it just not have a card style? Or do I, I guess I just didn't get the card style for it? I feel bad. I wish I had a card style for it. Especially after it just won me that game. So I want these... I think I want these Glass Caskets. I mean, Devout Decree, black, uh, Glass Casket. Questing Beast. I think I kind of change up my strat strategy. Um, so that's the thing is I, I it's hard to board in all this stuff though. Can't we can't take out like too many knights for a claim contender. Hey Yud. Thank you, thank you. Maybe we don't need this much removal. All right, maybe I don't need glass gasket. Last cast is just for one card.
No, Paradise Druid basically won us like that game. Like Paradise Druid made me a lot faster. I think I mean we have a really big top end. I don't think we can cut Paradise Druid, honestly. We have to get to like four or five mana. I guess I just don't play all these questing beasts. No, Night of Autumn's good. Ah. Give my Night of Autumn back. Yeah, I guess I just don't play all the, the questing beasts I was bringing in. And or all the removal. <laughs> you got it, Yud. Um, well, this looks a little sketchy to start with, but I like how we're going to have mana and cast spells and be able to cast the expensive spells that our deck is filled with. I like that. But unfortunately, the first two draws were not expensive spells. Um, yeah, like, the Questing Beast isn't in the main deck. I started to bring it in, but then I didn't. I guess I need more removal. <laughs> it's like, I maybe have too much removal, and then... We just have absolutely zero removal. There we go. Destroy target artifact. Hey, Red Packs. The Mono Blue Devotion's your deck, right, 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 Pax? Cool. So of course I could play Knight of Autumn, make it a 4-3, but I want, if they have, um, if they'd have like the enchantment, I'd want to be able to destroy that. That's a good point there, Storm. <laughs> Just Iron Crag Chupacabra over there. This card is so good. This Elspeth Conquers Death card it is so good. It's just like an upgraded Eldest Reborn because you get to actually target and you exile. It's so good. You don't get you don't get your opponents creatures and planeswalkers, but that first chapter is pretty awesome. Hmm. So they have three cards. 
They have two cards. card. Cavalier is fine. I think we need to try to finish this game out. Yeah, good thing I put the Cavalier down to the bottom because if we draw that, we would have lost. Ugh, still not looking good for us, though. They get to just chump block. Okay. That's a great draw. So I'm glad... Like, I'm glad they didn't attack with their 7-4 the last turn. Correct. For people that don't want spoilers. So I don't have the record up there. So if my opponent would have attacked with the 7-4, put me down to 7, they still would have had three blockers for my two lethal attackers. And then I could have only killed one and they would have been able to attack and win. So they... They could have won that if they would have attacked that 7-4. I was really glad when they didn't. You're welcome, Rypax. Okay, cool. Yeah, and see, we got three people here. So they like the exclamation point score. They like the hidden score because they watch on YouTube a lot. Cool. So yeah, I understand not wanting to necessarily watch the videos in the exact order I post them. So of course I want to save Night of Autumn for Fires of Invention. So that means that I would want to lead with the Claimed Contender, but if I lead with the Claimed Contender, then it's not getting anything. So basically we should just draw Worthy Knight this turn. Worthy Knight? No. So the other possibility is just not playing anything on turn three. I'm not playing Knight of Autumn, of course. So it's either play Contender is just a 3 3 with no trigger or play nothing. I'll play nothing. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Here we go. Let's try this. 
No surprise there. Hey, ride or die. No, I okay, am cool. This up as I go. Playing the Sultai deck from the other day with, with Ashiok and the single Jays. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. Definitely expecting Deafening Clarion. So if I attack with Cavalier of Dawn, I think my opponent's going to cast Deafening Clarion. Yeah, they want me to attack there. Yeah, it's all set up. What do you think, Storm? That sounds like you know, Taya Carbon Required saying that Cardboard Live's working well. That's awesome. That's more like it. Yep, there was the Clarion. He had a Justice Strike, too. Expecting Teferi just to bounce the Great Henge. My other option was have Elspeth Conquer's Death exile the Cavalier of Flame, and then we get to attack the Teferi, and that's a lot better at managing the battlefield, but Fire Zone Invention is just such a good card that I went that route instead. Yeah, just one of the one of our viewers here in chat um, that also streams. Um, another streamer um, knew the the person that, that the developer for Cardboard Live and and yeah, it was basically the developer did miss my email from before, just missed it and. Um, And so, yeah, got in touch, and now we got Cardboard Lives. That's awesome.
So unfortunately they had a backup fires. That hurts, so got rid of that one now. I would rather use the Elspeth Conqueror's Death on the creatures, you know, and hope that Knight of Autumn can hold down fires, but we can't just let them have fires of invention and you can't just let them have all that free mana. Their hand must be pretty awesome though, because they're not really discarding like, you know, they just discard the Cavalier. Looks like they have a pretty awesome hand. That's a good one. Okay. So obviously this attack's gonna happen here. All right. Um, they have no lands over there. So five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight. I'm gonna keep playing the land. I think I just want more mana in play. You know, I could have the the mana for the Vivian, but no, Jopsy, no. Oh, sorry, the previous song. Um. I'll, I'll go right back to the song where we're at with a one minute. That was Churches Recover. That was the previous song. I can no longer stand by and watch. No. Don't worry, I got this. This deck's pretty sweet. I'm already liking it. So there's a good chance that they block Cavalier of Dawn and then Justice Strike the Cavalier of Dawn. But they do that, I get to put Elspeth Conqueror's Death back into my hand, which I'm fine with. Okay, now they're just blocking. So they got more sweepers. Yeah, this deck is sweet. So even if there's a sweeper, we put Elspeth Conqueror's Death back into our hand. We get a couple of... Two twos with that. All right, got to find something to kill that thing now. Gonna make them run out of fires of inventions eventually. That's two to equip. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 12, 13. Hmm. I 
Should probably just be playing the Great Henge first. Just want to have enough mana for other stuff, but I probably should just be playing the Great Henge first. Yeah. Could have, but oh well. Could have drawn one extra card, but <clears throat> all good. I honestly don't know if I even sideboard with this matchup, to be honest. Devout Decree hits Cavalier of Dawn, or hits Cavalier of Flame, but nothing else. Glass Casket doesn't do anything. Gideon. Gideon doesn't die to sweepers, but also can get killed with their Cavaliers attacking. Heliod's Intervention can destroy fires. We already have a good amount of stuff that destroys fires, and it doesn't do anything else. Questing Beast pressures Teferi. <laughs> yeah, we may just keep this the same. I could see taking out one Shadow Spear. I don't think we really need the second. So I kind of want to play like one Intervention or one Questing Beast instead of a Shadow Spear, but I'm not sure which. I'll play an intervention. Destroying fires of invention is something you got to do. Just, just got to do it. <clears throat> now, so yeah, for the you can use the the one um, the one man ability with the uh, the shadow spear, even when it's not equipped. Yeah, that hand, we just had so many creatures to cast, and, you know, like, we just had, like, lands, and we just had so much gas the whole time that we just never needed to use Arcbow. But Arcbow is, you know, just, you know, whenever you don't have all, all of that gas, it's something that you can do. Hmm. This is pretty awkward here, honestly. If I play another Paradise Druid, and then they have, if they just have Deafening Clarion, this is really rough. Hopefully no Clarion. Yay, no Clarion. Responsibility. I'll protect you. Yay, land. That's basically land. It's a tap land. I like temple. But basically land. This song, this is Boards of Canada. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. Rogbiv. Typed in the chat there. Circle of Loyalty triggers every time that we play a legendary spell. 
We get to make another knight. Yeah, here, here we go. Great Henge. Great Henge value now. We have the Cavalier of Dawn blow up the Kenrith. We got Knight of Autumn for more fires. Roy G. Biv. It's the colors of the visible spectrum. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That'd be my guess. Fun color fact, magenta is something of a made-up color. Red and blue don't intersect since they're at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Let's slow this down. It's a fun color fact. I've got it. Yes, next where we got cardboard live now. What do you think of the new overlay? Them to draw land, of course. Wanted to play. Wanted to play land and then. Um, land and then Paradise Druid. Here goes nothing. Starman, the big tier three sub. Thank you so much there, Starman. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so how do I want to do this? That's really the main question.
right, so end step sweeper. I got four mana left to have uh, arc bow discard my other arc bow and try to hit a creature that costs four or less. It's not like 100% that we hit. But uh, if we do hit a creature, then of course it will trigger. This just enters the battlefield. It does. You don't need to cast to trigger the Greyhenge. Top four cards. Yeah. This isn't a fight you can win. I'm pretty sure I can win this fight. This might be a bad idea. Of course, we make the 3-3 three, three from the Circle of Loyalty. Hmm. <laughs> this has been awesome. Now I get to just activate Arcbow for 5 instant speed. Only discarding two. Discarded a fires. <laughs> oh, don't you love whatever they're discarding fires? That's a good sign. They don't have anything over here? Why is that doing that then? Elspeth conquers death. That's a good one. Exile that thing. <laughs> That's it. GG. Dude, that seemed like an awesome matchup for us. Jeskai Fires, and Jeskai Fires is a really popular best of one deck, and we didn't really even need to sideboard. Maybe this could be a good best of one deck. That was pretty awesome. That was a great match. That was a good one. Keep. So how are we against a mono red? That's something we may find out in just a second. I want a claimed contender. I don't want that one. I don't know. Yeah, we got some tools for Simic, you know, like with our Cavalier of Dawns blowing up everything, Elspeth Conquers Death, Exile, and I don't know. Maybe we were okay. But yeah, I could I could see Simic Ramp you know, going over the top. Like that's yeah, that's a good chance that's our toughest matchup. Like Simic Ramp. With uh Agent of Treachery and uh Andre's Forerunners. 
Yeah, I could see that being really tough. Yeah, I like the Boros deck that we're going to play later. That's the deck that I really like. It's kind of like a half aggro, half mid range. See you, Torbrand. I'm attacking because if, if we want to trade Bone Crusher Giant for Cavalier, it's a good trade. Yeah, it's a good trade before they play um, you know, Ember Cleave. So, you know, like we can just kind of keep the pressure on them also. Good job, Paracox. Good job. Conclave Cavaliers putting up some good defense. Good offense. Fortunately, I don't have the triple white to cast Cavalier of Dawn. So I can even have like the Cavalier of Dawn blow up my Conclave Cavalier and get an extra 3-3 three, three and then get two extra 2-2s two also. So we basically turn it turn this 1-4-4 four, four into a 3-3 three, three and two 2-2s. Two, two, Get a two drop. Darn. Obviously, if they have Ember Cleave, it's going to hurt a lot. It's basically impossible to ever block against Ember Cleave. Need to try to do what I can to stay alive though. This block will keep me alive. And I still have lethal on the way back. Because they attacked with that extra fervent champion. Okay. So now I either I either Cavalier of Dawn and blow up Ember Cleave and they get a 3-3 or I Elspeth conquers Death it they don't get the 3-3 I guess it's better to give them a 3-3 and me get a 4-6 just on the battlefield If 
If like there's going to be no Ember Cleave, would I rather have it where there's no 3 3 and no 4 6 or a 3 3 and a 4 6? I probably want the 4 6. One. I do not like playing defense. kind of play everything honestly like see so like devout decree glass casket heliod's intervention questing beast like tulsimer those are all good cards so what if i take out take out the great henge the circle of loyalties the arc bows um a lot of fives Two of those, two of those. Um, one of these. A couple of Paradise Druids. Okay, let's give this a try. <laughs> yeah, that was close. We didn't really have any mana issues. We just turn five. We just had a tap land. Like that was that was it. Like we curved turn three cavalier, turn four cavalier. I wouldn't really say that we had mana issues. Mm. I don't like just having worthy knight get stomped. They obviously have Stomp or Shock. Likely Stomp. Deck list, do the exclamation point first. If you want to see the deck list. Just like that. did stop my face. Um. Why can't this be an enchantment creature? <laughs> Should be an enchantment creature.
to stay alive. Yay, no ember cleave. So it's gonna do five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right now, even if they draw a land, they got nine damage there with the castle at Umbreth. Double Castle and Breath. So the Fervent Champion does five damage. So if I just gain life, what, I'm gaining 10 life? So I gain 10 life. This does four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I go down to five. I guess I can double block this Torbran. I guess we knew that. Because Fervent Champion's gonna do five damage, so it's not lethal. The beast. If you thought Questing Beast was good before, give it Trample, Lifelink. So that's Trample, Lifelink, Death Touch, Vigilance, Haste. Wait, why do they say good game whenever they have light up the stage? The game's not even over. Here's Torbran. The shock does four damage now. So they had they had to draw something else that does direct damage. They did. Yeah, they are now ahead. Knowing when they say good game, and but they still have a really good card in hand. All right, so now I'm gonna block here so I don't take all this damage.
I only said good game back because they said it, so I... That's the only reason why I did. Yeah, the double light up the stage. Pretty good. So the last cards were light up the stage, steamkin, light up the stage. Stomp, or Shock, Bone Crusher, Giant, Torbran, Embercleave. Those are their last seven. <clears throat> Time for us to draw another Questing Beast. Questing Beast. Not Questing Beast. So I can gain 12 life. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13. So I can do 13 right now. If I if I just make a token and then equip the token with Shadow Spear, that's not going to be good enough. That was a great draw. That was just eight great draws in a row. So how much damage are we doing here? Actually, maybe I still stay alive. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I go to one. Wait. Um, three, four, five, six. I think I go to one. Yeah, so never mind. Alright, so I got this. What a close one. Wow, what a close one. Both of those games, I won both of those games at one life. Both times, and I had I had good hand I had very good hands both games, and I won at one life both games. Ugh, that was really close. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, they thought I was going to die, so I attack with everything. I mean, yeah, I think I think that's a good attack with everything. It's, you can't... It, no blockers would have kept them alive, right? Like, death touch, trample with questing beasts like it's not like blockers would have kept them alive um somebody asked about uh fluky i'm trying a new thing uh where for people that don't want to know the results for when they're watching them on youtube and stuff they don't want to know the, the results of the previous decks 
um, have it hidden so they can so they don't have to see it but for people that want to see it if you're here in chat you can type exclamation point score if you want to know the results or um, if you're watching it also if you're watching them later on of course you can always just go to the end of the video if you want to know what the score was but then at the the last deck that I upload each day, I'll put all of the results in the video description. I'll put all of the results from the previous, from all the decks on the day. If you're, you know, like just watching it later after I upload all the videos, if you want to know those, the scores, you can check the last video. So obviously this is Teamer Adventures. Night of Autumn would be good to it'd be good to save Night of Autumn. Normally. Normally it'd be good to save Night of Autumn for because of how devastating the um, that artifact is, but we need to play Night of Autumn to have a knight in play to be able to have a claimed contender trigger. I think my mono red opponent played that game exactly how they should have played the last game. I don't. Yeah, I think they played exactly how they should have played. If they don't attack with everything, because remember, I, I can make a creature with the Castle Ardenvale. Maybe I have like an instant speed removal for another thing. I was at four. They played exactly how they should have played. Get a Cavalier of Dawn and kill an Edgewall Innkeeper. Keep them from drawing cards. Thanks, QQ. Um, I don't have, I don't have a great one right now, Fizzy. But that is something that I'm working on this week. I'll, I'll definitely be playing some Grixis this week. Um. Yep, they had the barber.
yeah, I guess. I guess I need to do what I needed to do last turn and that is destroy this cap this edge wall innkeeper. If I don't, you know like they're drawing multiple cards next turn with it. Guess I need to just I should have just done that last turn. Oh gosh. They're going Great Henge also. It's probably not good for me. So I'm going with the Circle of Loyalty first before the Great Henge. I, I can only play one of them no matter how I do it, but if I play the Circle of Loyalty first, then whenever I cast the Great Henge, since it'll, it's a legendary spell, it'll trigger the Circle of Loyalty. And we'll make another token. But they have... They have a lot more mana and a lot more creatures and also a great henge, so I don't really expect us to win this. We need to draw creatures to keep up. That's a creature. That's a great draw. It's a great draw. It's a great draw. Our Castle Ardenvale can make more tokens, and of course the Circle of Loyalty can make tokens also. So we can, even if we don't draw a creature, we can at least make some tokens, but obviously they're just, they have like infinite cards over here because they have infinite creatures. Um, obviously our, I guess our best draws are something to destroy the Great Henge. You know, like, so we're looking for Cavalier of Dawn, Knight of Autumn. Those are our best draws. Like Knight of Autumn, Cavalier of Dawn. Or a claimed contender that finds one of those. On Night of Autumn. No. Well, GG.
contenders about it you know as good a draw as we can have uh, we're just taking obviously we just can't take a turn off in this this kind of matchup though all they have to do is find more brazen borrowers bounce these artifacts and game's over or fey of wishes and the game's over Tokens don't trigger the Great Henge. I don't get to draw cards whenever tokens enter. How do we deal with this? So while the Circle of Loyalty and the Great Henge are awesome cards, the problem with them, I guess, is Brazen Borrower. That's kind of the problem. Yeah, we don't really need Shadow Spear. I think we need to be more aggressive. I don't think we can outgrind their deck, honestly. And especially with Fey of Wishes, I think we have to be more aggressive. So we're putting in some questing beasts. don't like our chances. Yeah, Murder Strider is a good card. Yeah, Murder Strider is definitely a good card. The black base decks are kind of struggling keeping up with everything else in the format, but, but yeah, Murder Strider is a good card. That was five spells there that we just put down to the bottom. It's kind of good to see whenever we need to draw lands. But double innkeeper. We know the bottom five cards are our lands. I don't know why innkeeper at one mana, lucky clover two mana. I don't know why those cards were printed. So there's only one land in all of those also. We just saw So so far since our opener we've seen 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 16 cards and one of them was a land that was put down to the bottom so There's one land in the 16 cards I 
And obviously you can't can't compete if you don't have don't have mana. But I don't know if we're really competing with that anyway, it's it's a little much. All right, we got turn three Cavalier on the play, so that's good. Turn three Cavalier into turn four Cavalier. It's a good start. But as we saw, just saw with that teamer deck, I think our, our biggest problem our, our hardest matchups are going to be the Simic decks that have a lot of ramp and just get more mana and, and spend more mana than us over the long haul. That's our that's our hardest matchups. And so this is going to be a good test. You know, like we have a good hand, and they didn't have a turn two play. So Sultai version, usually Sultai version is trying to play a bunch of Casualties of War, which Conclave Cavalier is good against Casualties of War. So I can either play Cavalier or I can play Worthy Knight plus Circle of Loyalty, and we'll go with that. Even though that's not a great play against Casualties of War. Gives them this artifact to destroy. Stomping ground. I was not expecting a stomping ground. Yeah, not expecting that. But yep, here's casualties. I don't think they're playing Niv Mizzet. Oh, looks like they are playing Niv Mizzet. Oh yeah, they're taking eleven. They're they're just taking lethal. I just attack out. I wish the Vow Decree was permanent. Because I'll target permanent that's black or red, where you could get Fire's Invention. Um, I think I'm just going to keep this the same. Again, I don't know about sh this Shadow Spear, I guess. I guess I'll play a couple of Questing Beasts instead of an Arc Bow and a Shadow Spear. We'll put a couple of Beasts in here. Questing beast good. So you know what? I'm going to just keep the All Swept Conqueror's Deaths. 
Does seem like a matchup that Elspeth Conquers Death is really important in. Let's just keep the lands. Keep them. Not to worry about our stuff dying to a sweeper. Just hit some land drops. No lands in hand. Go get him, Knight of Autumn. Looks like they need that Fires of Invention. They find another one, we're exiling him. Darn. So yeah, they got all five colors. Now they're just gonna be looking for lands. Conclave Cavalier. More like Conclave Cavalier One. I don't know. <laughs> All right, time wipe arrow casualties. That casualties is going to be really rough. Hey, Windcat. Playing the mono blue and ranked, and it's doing great. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't need to be budget. I mean, I would just play the other... I wouldn't play Unsummon. You want to play the other... cards that are not Unsummon. Or I'd play the other borrowers. There we go, the other brazen borrowers. Uh, this, this casualties of war is going to be rough. If I would have drawn the land here, I would have been able to play Great Henge plus Elspeth Conquer's Death. That would have been the best. We were we were on a mold of four, and so started off kind of rough.
Uro does gain a lot of life. That is a lot of life. Yep. I am the <laughs> you cannot run or hide. not having any time to play this Great Henge. That would have been really nice if we would have had the Great Henge earlier. Yeah, if we would have just hit that one land drop. So, more questing beast. Less arc bow, shadow spear. Maybe we need these Gideons too. Just need to be more aggressive. Yeah, ramp, ramp decks are definitely what our mid-range deck is going to struggle with. It's just... It's the hard hard part about playing mid-range is dealing with ramp. Hmm. Definitely have to put back one of the expensive cards. Um, all right, my sit back and, and have the Elspeth Conqueror's Death plan did not work last time, so we're going to put that back. Hopefully draw a third land. Ugh. All right, we'll just go Worthy Knight, Worthy Knight. With them, you know, Temple of Mystery, maybe they don't have maybe they don't have Clarion. Or Clarion mana. I don't like this scry to the top. Very skeptical that 24 is enough lands for this deck still. I guess there's the flower for the 25th, but still very skeptical that's even enough. skeptical about that. This looks like a perfect hand for our opponent. That was their turn four, by the way. Just casting ten mana. Worth of stuff. Including destroying all my stuff. All right, so we went 3-2, lost to the two big mana decks. I, uh, let's see, Arkbo, yeah, I mean, I think there's there has to be more lands. Like I, that's something that I was 
really considering, you know, at the beginning and just playing that. It's just not enough land. Um, we didn't really ever arc bow. I would take out the third arc bow at least for a land. And I don't know about like the two shadow spears. I think one's probably fine. I think the deck could probably play more questing beast. But I think immediately you just have to play another land. In my opinion, the deck has a, a lot of card advantage. I think it's okay. Like whenever we play a longer game, I think we still have a, a lot of card advantage, and that's that's okay having extra lands. Arkbo is the kind of card that likes extra lands, also. But that was just too many too many games that we just lost there in those last two matches, like where we just had two lands that we just don't get to, um, uh, don't get to play spells. So I really think it could be like twenty five lands with a flower. Not 24 in a flower. Um, like, I, I I mean, I wouldn't mind playing 26, honestly. Having extra lands isn't really a problem. But not being able to play spells is a problem. You can't ever win when you, when you can't play spells. If you have extra lands, maybe you have, you know, like some castles and stuff like that, and you still get to do things. Uh, anyway, but yeah... Still, you know, we're going to struggle with the, the ramp strategies. That's going to be kind of a struggle. Um, but if we could curve out, we we had a better chance. It does kind of feel like we should just be playing the Questing Beasts in the main. Questing Beast was like something I, I kind of always wanted. Uh, again, I'm a little skeptical on like the Shadow Spear, the Arc Bow, the Circle of Loyalty. But, you know, want, want to keep on trying those. Elspeth Conqueror's Death looked awesome. Conclave Cavalier was amazing. Contender, Knight of Autumn were very good. Overall, I liked the deck. It was fun to play. You know, we just got kind of soured on those those last few games of not playing any spells because we didn't have lands and just mulliganed a bunch and stuff like that. So we kind of got soured on, on it. But, you know, we got to do a lot of cool stuff. This is a fun deck to play. All right, that's Arkbow Knights. Um... So those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and I hope you leave some comments. You know, let me know what you think of the deck, and if you're trying it out yourself, you know, leave those comments. Let me know how it's going for you. But thank you so much for watching some Arkbow Knights, and I will see you for the next video.